From the Lower Colorado River Authority, this is Wavelength. The creation of this new river authority will help electrify rural Texas. And so today, we gather here to dedicate this mighty structure for Canada. This has been a great organization for 70 years. It's going to be a great organization for a long time to come. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the March 2005 edition of Wavelength. About 450 managers and supervisors gathered in early February for this semi-annual meeting to hear directly from General Manager Joe Beal about the state of LCRA. The president in the State of the Union address said that the State of the Union was um, that it was competent and strong, and that's what we are. There's a couple of procedural steps that we're still going through. Joe Beal, who celebrated his fifth anniversary as LCRA general manager in January, opened the meeting with a review of the major accomplishments of the past six months, including a well-managed November flood event, the completion of LCRA's $52 million dam modernization project, and reaching a milestone in the LCRA San Antonio water system project. Joe also emphasized the tremendous growth LCRA has experienced in recent years. And these numbers crystallize what this management and leadership team has been able to do in the last five years. LCRA's assets have increased 72% over the last five years, from $1.8 to $3.1 billion. Revenues have increased 70% from $523 to $884 million at the end of last fiscal year. All this and the number of employees has increased just 29% from 1730 to 2225 And we've done it safely. And this is probably the most important factor that I will give you. From 2001 through 2004, We've reduced the rate of incidents by 50%, and we've reduced the days away from work by 31%. And that's because we are fundamentally a safer organization now than we were five years ago. So these are fantastic numbers. Y'all give yourselves a hand for that. I'm John Meismer. I'm your CFO. Chief Financial Probably Officer John Meismer explained the basics of LCRA's annual business plan by comparing it to a household budget, only with much larger numbers. Talking to legislators, talking to members uh, of both the House and Senate, talking to the Deputy staff. General Manager Rick Bluntzer gave an update on the 79th legislature currently in session in Austin. He anticipates a tremendous number of bills will be filed on water issues in Texas. So what's the first thing we did? We went out and called a whole bunch of people at random. Executive Manager Robert Kulik delivered the results of LCRA's latest public survey. It shows that LCRA is not widely known by the general public within its service area. But the organization was given a favorable rating by those who were familiar with LCRA. Corporate communications will use this survey information to develop a communications plan that can help build public support and better tell LCRA's story. December, you know, to see how it was working. These day-long meetings also give employees a chance to network, share information, and perform group exercises. I like the fact that we get to hear from across the organization and what's going on and and the, the different resources that I didn't know were out there. Um, and it's something that I can take back to my employees now and share with them about what's going on and, and why we all work together to make things happen. This event today was perhaps one of the most enjoyable, refreshing meetings that we've had. It was significant in that it told a story, told a story of a lot of successes that we had in 2004 some of the major accomplishments, some of the challenges that we went through, uh, and it also gave you a glimpse of the future. 
It's a brisk February morning here at Lake Travis, and LCRA employees are getting ready to launch their latest scientific tool here that will help them monitor the water quality here on Lake Travis. Behind me is the buoy profiler that will be placed in one of the deepest parts of Lake Travis, and will help them monitor the water quality levels down to 180 feet. Two of these automated profiling buoys are being deployed today, one near Sandy Creek, and the other here, just above Mansfield Dam. This 3,000 pound anchor will hold the buoy in position. These buoys are part of the CREMS project. That's the Colorado River Environmental Models project. This is the first phase, Lake Travis. Um, Basically, we're making a great big model of the lake, which requires a lot of data to understand how the water moves in the reservoir from uh, Marble Falls all the way through. We need to know what happens to all the water. The equipment we're deploying is a part of that. It's a, it helps answer parts of the, the question as to what the water is doing on a, on basically on a daily basis. Once operational, the buoys will take water quality measurements every three feet from the surface down to the lake bottom. Samples include temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, conductivity, chlorophyll, and turbidity. We're cautiously excited about this buoy because of the information it can give us. Um, as you see, it's, it floats out here in the lake and we're able to call that from our desktop. So we'll have daily information on the lake and we're able to access that via a cell phone that communicates directly to the buoy. Uh, if there's any kind of event on the lake, we can program it to take more samples. We have uh, concentrations of algae that we hope to be able to predict as a function of time. Ruben Solis will use data from these new buoys to help develop computer models, which can help LCRA look into the future of the Colorado River. The goal of this uh, project is to develop a set of integrated models uh, from uh, Lake Buchanan all the way down to the coast. And so that includes uh, watershed models, uh, it, it includes uh, models of the lake, includes models of the, the river that we can use to evaluate uh, future growth scenarios, future policy decisions, and, and so forth, and help us guide that decision-making process to, to help protect the water quality of the system. As the population of Central Texas continues to grow and development crowds our creeks, rivers, and lakes, these high-tech tools will help LCRA keep watch over our precious water resources. When the wildlife population in Fayette County, including whitetail, deer, quail, and songbirds, was in serious decline, landowners came together in the early 1980s to form the first wildlife management co-op in the county. You like a wildlife calendar? Welcome to the sixth annual spring meeting of the Fayette County Wildlife Management Association. Seven co-ops make up the association with a combined membership of 627 landowners holding nearly 109,000 acres of land. The average tract of land in Fayette County has dwindled in size over the years because of land fragmentation to about 40 or 50 acres. And the home range for the white-tailed deer is about 200 acres. So as you can see, if you just have 40 acres and try to manage for deer, it's kind of hard to do by yourself. But if you get all the adjacent landowners working together towards a common goal, it's a whole lot easier to achieve these objectives. This was truly a family event, with 30 vendors offering everything from deer feeders to jewelry, from farm equipment to native grass seeds. LCRA's Clean and Green program gave away some 2,000 seedling trees for planting. Well, we came by and we picked up a tree to plant in our house. According to Texas Parks and Wildlife officials, these co-ops have a tremendous positive impact on wildlife populations in the state. And so what they learn in the associations is first how to manage the habitat how to make sure that there's a diversity of vegetation on the property for the deer, from the forbs, the wildflowers, to the brush species and so forth. Also, how they need to manage their agriculture uh, operations, you know, how to manage their cattle grazing and so forth so that they can ensure the wildlife have what they need. Then they can move on to looking at things like 
planting food plots to increase the amount of food on the property for the deer. And then finally, we educate them on how to manage that deer herd. Cooper Farm is a 180-acre natural science laboratory where LCRA demonstrates land management techniques for agriculture as well as wildlife habitat. LCRA plays a big role in the success of our plan. I mean, we're out here today at Cooper Farm and it's a great opportunity for us to get everybody in the county together, not at a great cost, and give something back to the community that it puts so much into wildlife management. It also gives them an opportunity and a central meeting place to talk about interests they share. Community efforts like this will help preserve open spaces, native vegetation, and a diverse wildlife population for future generations to enjoy. Rice farming is a critical part of the economy in the Gulf Coast region of Texas. Water from the Colorado River was first used to irrigate rice crops here in the Lower Basin in 1885. Today, through its four irrigation districts, Gulf Coast, Lakeside, Garwood, and Pierce Ranch, LCRA has the capability of providing water to over 91,000 acres annually. Back in 2000, when the intake basin was drained for maintenance work, crews discovered serious undermining of the original pump building. Temporary repairs were made, but the building continued to settle. This project, which started in November, replaces the old pump system with four brand new 50,000 gallon per minute vertical pumps. Okay, we pick the water up at the river pump station on the Colorado River, it's about six miles from the lake plant. And it travels the canal behind the lake, comes into this plant where we relift the water another 28 feet, drop it into this canal, which is the lake canal. And there's probably a 150 miles of canal beyond this point where the water is distributed into the fields for the, uh, to the farms. This is a great example of how different LCRA business units and departments come together on a project. John Hartman's maintenance and construction crew is providing welders, mechanics, pipe fitters, and electricians for this job. We're the lost children at LCRA, yeah. We run from one end to the other. Uh, every, all far north that we've been is Lomita and far south is Bay City. We've crossed lines left and right with all different departments. Like this department here, we're working with it. The engineers are coming out of water division. We've had some wholesale power service engineers help us on this job here also. But uh, yeah, we're pretty diversified. We, we, we touch base with anything. So we're more of an LCRA company than we are any other department. That's how we figure ourselves. We're just all work for LCRA. This work is scheduled to be complete in mid-March, just in time for the start of the irrigation season. This month on Board Profile, meet Walter Garrett from Wharton County. I'm held liable for, I guess, responsible for the construction. Walter Garrett was appointed to the LCRA Board of Directors by Governor Rick Perry in 2004. Garrett received his bachelor's degree in animal science from Prairie View A&M in 1971 then spent the next 32 years with the U.S. Department of Agriculture as a district conservationist in Wharton County. In 2002, Garrett retired and is now living his dream. Once I turn off the main road um, and enter the farm, uh, I've just entered paradise. Walter Garrett now spends most days gardening and raising hay on this 85-acre tract of land near Pledger, Texas. He says he is having the time of his life. This is my baby. Garrett says after his wife Ethel, an assistant principal in Wharton ISD, this 1946 Ford tractor is his second love. 
There's a wide variety of things to do on the farm. Uh, you can change your, your plan uh, at a flash. Uh, there's always work to do out here. And uh, that part I, I really do like because I guess I have control of my schedule and that when I get enough of it, I rest the tractor. After retirement, Walter pledged to spend 10% of his time giving back to the community. He now serves on the Wharton City Planning Commission and Beautification Committee. He's a member of the Sheriff's Association of Texas, the Farm Bureau, the NAACP, and of course, the LCRA Board. It allows me to work with people that are very, very knowledgeable, very, very skilled in a lot of areas. I, I, I don't know of any other organization that I've heard or read about that offers more than uh, LCRA. It is an abundance of songbirds here. Garrett has just helped create the Caney Creek Conservation Foundation, which he hopes will attract ecotourism to the area. This is a trip tour here that we have dedicated to the foundation as part of that, uh, our research. Garrett says he is very interested in efforts for more diversity and inclusion within the LCRA culture. As an African-American board member, I think uh, it, it lends itself to uh, further illustrate the mission uh, of the LCRA. I think our customers uh, are happy uh, when they, they see uh, that atmosphere, that diversity um, is being part of uh, LCRA's uh, foundation. Walter Garrett's term on the LCRA board will expire in 2009. Well, that's it for this edition of Wavelength. We'll look forward to seeing you again next time.